Oh. Hi. Oh, there we are. I am so sorry for keeping you waiting. I just got in and sat down. So um, thank you so okay. much for your patience. Yeah, no <sighs> problem. How are hmm? you? Oh, I'm I'm good. I mean, aside from that meeting going, you know, way over time, um, I'm good. Things are good. So um, it's so nice to meet you. Thank you for reaching out and asking me to do this. I'm happy to answer, you know, whatever questions I can. Yeah. So I could just uh, jump around then before getting to Fire Emblem. Sure, absolutely. So the first thing I can ask is, uh, do you have a special story of how you got into SAG? Ooh, uh, do I have a special story? Well, so um, not really. You know, I uh, the way that you can qualify for union membership is to book a union project. And that can be kind of tricky because, um, you know, in order to work a union job, like they, you often, it's often easier to get those auditions if you're already union. Um, but in my case, um, it was for uh, what was the which was the project? Um, it was for the movie Pompo the Cinephile. I don't know if you've heard of it, but um, it's an animated film, and um, I got to do some additional voices on it. And um, I was Taft Heart Lead, which is what they call the paperwork for allowing non-union actors to gain uh, to qualify to be able to join the union or uh, work a union job. And so um, I got taft it onto that and then it ended up being fun because um that movie is distributed in the u.s by g kids and g kids does like the studio ghibli films among other movies and so i just thought it was kind of cool that um i got to do a film that was sort of involved with that but um i didn't have any particular fun stories related to it it was just like oh that's that ended up being it and i got to go see it in theaters with my roommate later which was really fun <laughs> yeah and do you still work as a production assistant too or um, actually, no. So, um, well, the reason I the reason I mentioned G Kids is because I actually work there now um, it, as a home entertainment coordinator. So now um, I help them with uh, distributing the DVD releases and Blu-ray stuff and um, digital and all that. So it's kind of like, oh, hey, like I'm already familiar with your guys's work because I got to work on Pompo the Cinephile. And that was sort of a fun conversation starter when I started working there. Also, if you see me... Um, moving my arms it's because my cat penny is trying to come by and she might appear on camera if she decides to walk by but i'm trying to try not to keep her in the frame <laughs> <laughs> is the goal to work full-time in voiceover eventually then you know i'd really like that but um i guess it just sort of depends on if i feel like it's feasible you know um because as much as I would really love to be able to do this full time, um, I, I do really like the stability of having a day job. I like that, um, you know, if I don't book for a while, I can I still have my normal amount of income coming in. I like that um, you can get benefits through a job, which with voice acting, it's a lot harder to get unless you're a union member. And then uh, you can get health care and stuff through SAG-AFTRA. Um, so I would like to do it someday full time, but I don't know if I'll get there. We'll find. We'll see. We'll see if that end up ends up being the case or not. So what what was your uh like first major anime role then? Ooh, first major anime role. Um, well, the first one ever was for Tsubaki from D Four DJ, but it was just like it's just the quickest little cameo ever. So um, in the show, there's a bunch of these girls form like little bands or units to do you know musical performances and it's really fun and cute and um it's based on like a, a mobile game you know and so uh one of the groups from the game that doesn't feature heavily in the anime in that season yet appears as a back a cameo in the background of one of the episodes and the girls are talking and so i voiced one of the i voiced tsubaki tsubaki um who she's one of she's like the lead singer of that of her particular unit rondo in the game um but in that season one of the show rondo didn't feature very heavily so it was just like a couple little background lines but that was my very first like anime work ever and i was really excited about it um but then the first more major role that you know wasn't just background voices and stuff um i think that was mafuyu from mayusetsu opening act have you watched it oh, i know what so, that is yeah yeah um it's a really cute you know, it's it's about girls who are trying to do stand up comedy um, with varying levels of success. And, um, you know, Mafia is this like really exuberant, uh, really enthusiastic girl who really wants to get into comedy. Um, but she and her friend. Um, oh, my gosh. What is 
she's voiced by Jackie Lastra in the dub, who actually it's funny because um, Jackie and I have voiced duos in several different projects at this point. Like uh, oh. we're in Maya Setsu, our, our characters are both in the same unit in Nikkei. Um, I voice um, Polly and um, her her character is sort of like her police her police sidekick. So I just thought that was kind of funny. Um, but basically in my set suits about like, yeah, a girl's trying to pursue stand-up comedy and I'm not really into stand-up comedy. So I was worried I wasn't very good at it, but it ended up being okay because like the girls aren't very good at it either initially. And so it's about them learning to become funnier and um, yeah, it all worked out. Wasn't uh, Love Live around the same time? Uh, Love Live was after actually. Um, okay. I'd have to look up... I'd have, you know, I'd have to look up exactly when I was, when recording was happening for everything. But um, it's funny how the the timelines for stuff like that work out sometimes because, you know, sometimes you'll have projects that you're publicly able to talk about in quick succession, but maybe you recorded for one of them two months ago and one of them two years ago. So you can't actually tell by release dates um, when every project was cast and when they were starting for, or when they started recording. Um it's kind of funny looking back on that, actually, because uh, that was during, you know, all of that was during peak COVID era, right? And so a lot of actors were recording from home. Um, and it's it's incredible, like, both how much the landscape looked so different during that time and also how much it ended up evolving both because of it. And then in the years since uh, people were quarantining, um, just how much things have gone back to uh, in person and things like that. So, um Wow. Sorry, I'm not trying to ramble. It was just... Oh, hello. This is Miss Penny. Hi, Penny. Can you say hi? Hi. Okay, I'll put you down. She's mad because she wants to... This is my booth behind me. Um, I know I blurred the oh. background. And she tries to climb up it a lot. So I tried to put these things to prevent her from doing that because I'm worried she's going to fall. But she defies me constantly. So... Yeah. <laughs> well, what do you think... Um in general, not just with anime, what do you think the darkest headspace you've had to go for a uh, character is? Ooh, the darkest headspace? Mm, that's a good question. Um, to be honest, a lot of my characters are usually, usually avoid getting into those spaces. They're usually, you know, bright, optimistic, idealistic girls. And sometimes they're in these, um, th these like fun slice of life shows where it's like, you know, they may struggle sometimes, but they're there to follow their dreams and you know, do what their heart, what makes their heart sing. And, and that makes me really happy because everyone needs that kind of thing in their life sometimes. But there were a couple where it got pretty dark. And I think one was, um, um, uh, did you ever watch Wonder Egg Priority? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, that show is very dark. Um, <laughs> and um, I, I have just a very small role in that. There is a girl named uh, Chiemi, and um, she's sort of a figure in the backstory of one of the main girls. And she basically like had been this huge fan of this girl who was an idol, but then uh, the girl called her fat, and so she like, you know, she basically developed an eating disorder. And I think I think the show implies that she starved herself to death, and so she comes back um, briefly in this cameo to like say bye to the girl before she moves on. To an I should have mentioned spoilers. I'm sorry. Maybe when you upload this, you can say, hey, Wonder Egg Priority spoilers. Um, but, you know, that's that's a pretty dark headspace to get into, for sure. Um, and there's there's probably more if I could think of it. Um, I voiced a... There's, there's another um, brief role in Heavenly Delusion, which is another very dark but very excellent show. Um, and I voiced Oma, who's one of the one of the children at the facility, and... They're going through a rough time, but all of the characters are in that show, so <laughs> maybe it's not too unique to Oma specifically. What about the case where you've had to um, alter your voice the most? Ooh, where I had to alter my voice the most? <sighs> That's a tough one, because for the most part, I usually voice characters who are pretty close in range to what I sound like naturally. Sometimes I have to push up the pitch quite a bit, and that's a little bit difficult sometimes. Um... But I actually think, um, well, you know, Prez from Project Wingman, um, she's this, like, cool pilot, mercenary pilot. Well, she's not a pilot. She's the weapon system officer. But uh, you take her with you when you're flying two-seater planes in the game. And because she's, like, you know, it's, it's 
more like an ace combat inspired game it's like you know okay military type planes and flying and stuff you can't really go cute anime girl in that kind of setting right so i i tried to keep my voice in a lower more adult sounding range and i i tried to um you know sound badass and like you know all of that but um then people drew fan art of her being really cute anyway so i was like oh okay maybe maybe i didn't really succeed but uh, but that's one particular case where i remember yes i'm going to actively try and like sound more grounded and lower my pitch and i was like actively trying to think of that while i was recording and it to varying levels of success <laughs> well do you also have a particular process for um like boy voices if you've done much of that yet Oh yeah, I have done a couple. Um I well there's um there's a redub of the the Digimon movie. Well, yep. you know, the Digimon movie is actually three different Digimon movies, but um specifically they did a redub of the American cut that cuts them all together, right? And I'm excited for that to come out. Um but um I did get to voice Cody in that and um Cody is a young boy, and he's originally voiced by Felice Sampler. Uh, she did an amazing, amazing job establishing his voice. Um, but sadly, since she passed away, uh, they needed to recast. And so I basically do an impression of what Felice did um, as Cody. And so um, I don't think there there's not like too much of a specific process, at least for that. I was just trying to think like, okay, what does she sound like as Cody? Can I like get my voice into that pitch? And he's... Young boy voices, when they're voiced by either, like, adult women or otherwise AFAB people, they they tend to add a little more texture. So it's like, oh, instead of just talking smoothly like this, it's like, I'm going to talk a little bit more in my throat like this. And it's like, it, you know, it's kind of just to disguise the fact that you sound more feminine and by adding more texture. And um, because of the way voices, you know, young kid voices work, it's like, oh, it's easier, I think, for adult women or again afab people to reach that pitch than it is for older men so um yeah i guess i just kind of was like okay well i already know what cody sounds like because i i loved digimon growing up um so i was just like i wonder if i can do that and i was like oh yeah i guess i can kind of do that and i was like okay then i'm gonna audition and i did so um i know some folks are much better about doing warm-ups and things like that and i'm still trying to find which ones i like best myself personally but um, I don't know. Yeah, I, I try to experiment a little bit. So with, um, Fire Emblem, was that just a pretty general audition when that came up too? Oh, yeah. Um, hmm. I don't know. I don't know if I'm, how much I'm allowed to say about, like, audition process in general. Um, I doubt they would really care, but, um, but yeah, as, as is with most auditions, it's like, oh yeah, you get, You'll, you'll receive a script for a project, and sometimes they may or mo may not tell you what the project is, but a lot of the time you can kind of infer what it is based on what the dialogue sounds like, what the art looks like for the characters, if they include any, and which studio is recording it, because there are some studios that are well known for recording certain projects, right? And so um, I, I knew it. I, was familiar with the project. I was like, oh, okay. I, I kind of recognized it. Okay. I think, I think this is for Fire Emblem, but I, I didn't, you know, I didn't say anything or confirm it. I just sent it off. And then I got lucky in this cast. And um, that was really fun because that was my first time getting to be in Fire Emblem. And I love doing gotcha games because then I can, you know, watch my friends pull for the characters later and they can tell me if they're any good or if their kits are bad or whatever. <laughs> so, um, Anyway, to answer, to actually answer your question, sorry, I'm. It's the That's end of the great. day. My brain is going off in five different directions on every question. But to answer your basic question, um, it was it was just a standard audition, but I could kind of tell what it was, and I was trying not to get my hopes up. But then I booked it, and I was really excited. <laughs> so did you get um both Lara and uh, Rat Ratatoska at the same time then? No, actually, those are those are separate auditions. Um, so I was really excited that they brought me in again because I was hoping I didn't sound too similar to Ratatoskr for my Lara audition. But um, no, I guess they liked what I did. And so um, I recorded them actually at different times. So I just got to go in twice since I had everybody at the studio and it was great. Was that um, Patrick directing you or Caitlin or other people? or? Um, yeah, I think it might have been 
Caitlin both times actually. Um, okay. And she's wonderful. She's a great director. I love working with her. So. In terms of uh, developing the voices, they both sound like they're pretty close to your natural voice, especially Lara. Yeah, Ratatoskar, I can focus on making a little bit more, a little bit more frantic because that's that's how she is. Poor girl probably has anxiety. Um, but Lara definitely, I think, is closer to like my natural just speaking cadence, and I got to kind of stick to that. Um, didn't have to amp up the energy too much because she is, you know, she is lively, but. Um, Ratatoskar's energy is a lot different. So I I hope that just through the performances, they still sound distinguishable enough from um, each other. But uh, yeah, definitely I didn't have to stray too far from doing what's natural for my own pitch. Who do you think that you personally relate the most to? Ooh, who do I personally relate the most to? Like just between those two? Yeah. I mean, probably Ratatoskar just because <laughs> she's always... She's always, friend, you know, she's always stressed about something. And I'm like, yeah, that's me. <laughs> um, Lara's fun, but, um, you know, that that whole, the opening movie where Ratatoskar's just crashing in through the window and just stumbling at the feet of all the heroes. I'm just like, that would be me if I got isekai into the Fire Emblem Heroes world. Like, I would totally just crash it, biff the landing. That would be my intro. So I, it's got to be Ratatoskar for sure. <laughs> What what uh what could you relate to uh, Lara with then? You know, I the thing is is I don't think I have too much in common with her backstory because um, you know, in in the original like in the game, right? Like I I looked I looked her up um when I was voicing her so I could like try and get an idea because she used to be like a thief or like she was recruited to be like a thief, but then um. Hearn saves her and she becomes a dancer instead later. So it's like, you know, none of that's really relatable to me. But what I do like about her, is she's got a good attitude. You know, she um, she just wants to help people. And through her dancing, she can support her team. So it's like, you know, I really I really to those elements of, you know, having a craft you're passionate about and wanting to, you know, do what you can to help your friends. But but we are, otherwise, our backstories don't have a lot in common. And that's that's fine, because what I've found with some of these characters is, um, you know, sometimes they might be completely different from you, like particularly these actors who voice a lot of villains and stuff like that. And they're perfectly nice in real life. Um, but you don't really have to have much in common with them in order to do a good job voicing them. You just kind of have to understand where they're coming from. And I think even, you know, even evil people, like you can understand what their motivation is, even if you're like, well, you're wrong for doing that. You know, that's not a good thing to be doing, but I can see how you twisted that in your brain to decide that was the right thing to do. So um, in the case of Lara, it's like, well, I actually don't relate to her that much, but um, I, I relate to her attitude and I relate to where she's coming from there. So I hope that made sense. Um, yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> well, it is, it, all, it is always super interesting with the original characters and the mobile games since they're all based on Norse mythology. So you can kind of yeah. like see what's up. <laughs> Well, it's funny because, um, you know, when I was, when, uh, when Ratatoskar came out, I was like, oh boy, I'm going to look up and see if anyone's drawn any fan art. And I search up like Ratatoskar and you get a lot of um, God of War Ratatoskar instead, which is also great. God of War is a great game. Um, but it's just like, hmm, different, different uh, squirrels in the world tree there. But um, there's, there has been a lot of really cute fan art that I love seeing though. So that's been pretty exciting. Since they've been released, too, do you have, um, like, single favorite lines for either of them? Mm, I don't think I do, actually. You know, um, I know that in Fire Emblem Heroes in particular, each character only gets a handful of lines, really. And I think they're all really cute, but um, I don't think I have a particular favorite. I guess if I had to choose now, I'd, I'd think maybe just Ratatoskar's opening line, just because... Um, when we were recording it, um, we were working on like, oh, how like squeaky and how should I make my voice sound? And um, when I think, I think when I did the um, the opening, like the introductory line, she's like, oh, I'm, I'm Red Tosker. Like I did it in sort of a funny squeaky way that made both me and Caitlin laugh. So I was like, okay, that one has a nice memory attached to it. But otherwise, I'm just like, yeah, I, I, I did okay on all the lines. But I don't think there's a particular standout that I'm like, yes, love that one best. Mm -hmm. Well, I think just for me and like other 
people um, in the fandom so far that with Lara, one thing that stood out is um at the very end, like um all of her lines are very sprightly, and it's like would it would it would it would it make you happy if I said that I that I missed you when you're gone or something like yeah. that? Yeah, yeah, that, that that is a cute one. They're kind of like if you like Lara, that one's for you, you know. So <laughs> I think it's cute. Oh, hello, Penny. Oh, there she goes. All right. Sorry about that. I just don't want her climbing up there during the middle of the, <laughs> the call. So do you all do you also play Heroes then? I don't. I I downloaded it when I knew Ratatosker was going to come out, and I was like, oh, I'll get into the game, and then I'll like you know get all the currency, Penny. Okay. <sighs> I was like, oh, I'll download the game, and I'll like get all the you know I'll, I'll save up the currency because I don't I don't even know what the is it orbs you know I'll save up yeah. the orbs and that way I'll be able to pull for her. And then I just got busy and didn't get into it. And um, then Ratatoska came out and I learned that if you advance enough in the story, you get a free copy of her. So I was like, oh, good. Maybe I'll just get around to this eventually. Um, but I still haven't gotten into it. And so I definitely miss the Lara bit <laughs> or I'm going to miss it because um, I I just I can't allow myself to get into a, mo a new mobile game now. I'm not strong enough. <laughs> <laughs> Do you play? Um, I mostly just follow the lore for everything that happens. That's so, how I was for Genshin for um, like over a year before I finally sat down and played it. Because sometimes the story is just interesting enough, even if you don't get involved with the gameplay. So I feel you there. Well, is there anything that you want to say to the uh, Fire Emblem community? Um, Just thank you so much for playing. And people were extremely kind when the announcements came out and were, people were like tagging me and saying nice things. So just thank you so much for being nice. Um. You know, I know that games are really important to people and it can be kind of, I don't know, frustrating if a character sounds weird or like if the actor's doing something funky. So um, I just appreciate the kindness from the fans who enjoy it. And I hope that um, I hope that you all manage to pull for the characters you want, regardless of whether they're my characters or not. So <laughs> so good luck. Good luck on your summons. That's all I got. <laughs> Is that probably like the safest thing you can talk about that you're part of or um most recently yeah i guess just whatever i've already announced is is what i'm cleared to talk about um because fire emblem heroes has definitely been one of the highlights for sure um i am excited about some things that are coming up but i i can't say anything about those um i'm assuming but I better play it safe. I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> um, but hopefully folks will find out about those sooner rather than later. And then when they are, uh, maybe we can talk about those sometime. Penny, oh my goodness. I'm so sorry. She is just, uh, you can see her tail in the background. Penny, come here, darling. Yes. Hello. She's mad at me. Okay. Well, she just had her dinner, so she's fine. She's just wanting to play. I'll, I'll play with her after we uh, after we finish the interview. Well, my final question is always asking, uh, what do you want your legacy to be? Ooh, what do I want my legacy to be? Hmm. Well, because, you know, when I first started, I was just like, oh, man, I just want to be in all the franchises from, like, the games that I like and play and stuff. And not even just games, just, like, anime or whatever else. But, um, you know, even though there's definitely projects that I would really love, love, love to be in, I feel like as I get older, I care a little bit less about that than I did when I was a little younger. And I think I just, I guess I just care now about like doing good work and not being a crummy person. I know that's so basic, but it's just like, man, you know, I don't, I don't really think it. I need to be like, I don't really want to be like particularly inspiring or anything. I don't want to do like, I just want to do good work and form good relationships with the people I know and love and just and just be able to do this work that I really enjoy and not, not struggle. I, sorry, that's, that's not really a good question. Cause it's, or not, not a good question. It's not a good answer to your question. Cause it's like, well, I don't know if I've thought about that before. Yeah. I don't know. I, I just want to vibe. <laughs> I, that, that's my answer. I just want to, I just want to vibe. That's my legacy. I just want to vibe and have a good time, make some good memories, um, treat people well. That's all I, that's all I really want to do. Penny, oh my goodness, she's chewing on my sleeve. I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> do you want to be in the interview too? No, she doesn't. Um, well, thank is there you anything about else I can answer for you or or that um, you'd want to talk about? Oh, I was just going to say thanks. I'm glad that we got to do this. Yeah, me too. And again, I'm so sorry that um, I delayed our start. Thank you for your patience. Uh, I, I did 
have to drive for like an hour to get back. So I, I, I'm glad I messaged you before I started because I was just like, I'm not going to get back in time. But um, thank you so much for making the time and for reaching out. Um, I had a really good time. Um, I watched a couple of the other, other interviews and I'm like, oh, no, I definitely sound a lot more awkward than all my friends. So uh, oh, okay. <laughs> hopefully that'll be entertaining, if nothing else. <laughs> Um, but have a great rest of your night and maybe sometime we can, uh, we can talk again whenever, um, maybe I'll have more stuff to talk about many more things released. So yeah, for sure. You too. Thanks. Yeah. Catch you around. Have a great night. Bye. <laughs> Bye.